we'll be doing a tutorial of the same chapter, uh, our chapter two of Mike Myers CompTIA Plus certification, it's chapter four. Um, again, the first two chapters of the book were just more of a uh, ethics type of thing, and we don't need to go through that. We're just going to go right into the meat and potatoes of the actual book. Um, this is the episode six in true. The last one I did say was episode six. That is episode five. I will make that correction. I apologize. But at any rate, though, um, we are going to go ahead and get started here. Um, hope you folks are having a grand day there because I'm having an excellent day here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and just just hit on what we're going to be talking about today. The Identity and Operating System Folders of Windows 2000 XP and Vista Describe the Utilities in Windows Essential to Text. Okay, let's go ahead and get right into it and talk a little bit more about it real quick. Now, we left off, we're talking about, we were talking about the uh, different types of uh, processor um, architectures, the 32-bit uh, the processor architecture and the 64-bit versions. Now, I didn't get a chance to show you an actual uh, clip of what uh, the 64-bit edition would look like. Um, this is in rough. I know that with the Windows XP, they had a wallpaper that actually says this. Um, again, it is just a wallpaper, so just to let you know, um, that this doesn't mean that it's 64. You can just put this on the 32-bit and mean 64. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. It's a little trick. Um, but the way you can tell on most of them is if you go into the system properties. It will give you the actual um, uh, information stating that it is a 64-bit uh, um, operating system. Okay. All right. Um, just wanted to hit on that just a tad so you know. And here is a here's actually a way to check it in seven and also in Windows uh, Vista um, is to look here. Um, it will basically tell you it is a 64-bit operating system. It's uh, they're trying to start, they're spelling things out a little bit easier for us. Um, let's get into some of the meaning of uh, the 64-bit um, version, so that way we can just get some uh, idea again. Remember we talked about how much RAM um, usually they can use, and that most 64-bit uh, systems, um, they only work on Intel Itanium processors, as we mentioned before. So um, let's go a little bit further in depth here and talk about, uh, talk about that. Now, if you look here in the uh, the book here, it did mention a little bit of new information. Now, there is uh, there's, there's some terminology you have to really pay attention to. Notice this is Windows XP 64-bit edition here. Um, at one point in time, yes, it only ran on Intel Intendium processors, as I was talking about before. But uh, the Windows XP Professional X64 edition is now more common, and it runs on any AMD or Intel processor, as mentioned here that supports 32 and 64 bits. So uh, this is much more common. And I wanted to make that uh, plain because it's, this is uh, information you're probably going to have on your test more than likely. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you uh, had an idea as to um, which type of chips now will take it. Okay, And this is, of course, the most common one earlier. Now, really, these processors are, uh, excuse me, these 64-bit uh, operating systems and processors, I should say, that can hold them. Um, the, the boost didn't start actually until Vista, uh, when they came into play. Vista basically was the, the move that uh, Microsoft was going for to make this 64-bit uh, edition a reality. Now, remember how I mentioned earlier there about the 64-bit, uh, uh, how they have the X there in front of it, uh, going back to this, just to let you know. Um, that, the difference is when I when I pointed that out, I want to let you know that um, that is just how they describe it. The X in front of that, uh, in front of the actual edition of that 64-bit chip, um, was just to describe. That, that lets you know that they're they're still the same thing. Keep that in mind. But the differences in the terminology there, um, I wanted to make sure that everyone knows the X basically stands for the class. Um, the 64-bit is the actual architecture technology. So. Keep in mind, they're still the same thing, especially when it comes to software, um, which I'm going to talk about really quick here. Um, there's different versions, as you'll see if you're installing Vista or if you're installing Windows 7. You'll see on there it says X32, or excuse me, it, it'll say X86, or it will say X64. Now, 86 is the old processor types. Um, what Microsoft used that, or I should say, um, uh, Intel used that when they were designing the chips uh, themselves. They had to make a way to classify them. So this is just 
um, oh, actually it's Microsoft, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is Microsoft. Um, they picked, as it mentions here, Microsoft and others picked up the X number terminology and changed it to market 64-bit only versions of their software, branding the 64-bit software as X64. So that's the history behind it. That lets you know why they did that. Um, really doesn't mean much of anything, but um, uh, you, you do need to know that there are 32-bit um, uh, software and there's also 64-bit software f uh, for your particular operating system. And 32-bit will not fit uh, a 64, and vice versa. Okay. So anyway, um, just to let you know too about the uh, software, like I told you before, um, it's very important that you do your service pack updates if you're going to. Um, uh, install software even if it's a 64-bit version because uh, you could run into a lot of problems um, it's just recommended that you do that now you're gonna think wait a minute he's wrong uh, because I know that they can they're interchangeable you can use them that way well you are almost right and you are almost uh, and you are a little bit wrong if you try to execute it without setting it in what they call compatibility mode you will not be able to get that program to, to work. So you do have to go and you have to do something like this. Now I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of what you would need to do um, in order to get into compatibility mode. Now this is going to show the Vista's version of how to uh, how to get in there. Now let me increase this in size so you can take a look. And notice there that uh, that it's this is the path here. Program files, widgets for XP that they're showing here that you get in uh, to the actual file and then you're going to go over here and you're more than likely going to right click and right click and of course you go to properties the property button is going to take you to uh, these different modes now you, you want to make sure you look for the tab that says compatibility you check run this program in compa compatibility mode so that way when you double click it it works but remember this is for the 64-bit architecture it does not work for the 32 you cannot run a 32-bit um, uh, operating system um, and try to run compatibility compatibility mode if I can talk compatibility mode for 64-bit um, uh, software okay there's no way they, they haven't designed that yet and actually would defeat the purpose if you think about it so the the point is of course for them they want to get you into the x64 technology eventually okay so let's just show let me show you what it looks like on uh, I'm gonna go to server 2003 to do this uh, give me a quick second here and um, I'll be right back okay here we go alright now I'm gonna go here to start and this is just 32 bit but just let you know you, how compatibility mode uh, works now I usually take a path I'll go here to, uh, let's say go my, my computer C drive and you go to your program files here and then in here you want to look for an exec file is what they're talking about so let's say um, I don't want to use that one uh, let's say what I have here that you, we could use this uh, okay well, let's say filezilla okay I use this actually to, uh, to do a lot of FTP so we're gonna look for the exec file notice that there's one right there but this is the one we really want right here so you right click on it you go to properties and notice a bit, notice this right there compatibility mode you hit that right there and then you go in here and take a look at all these that's, that's in here so if you want to run it in XP mode because you're having issues with it it's probably recommended to do it this way um, I know a lot of programs right now for Windows uh, 2003 server um, require you to run some things, uh, some programs in compatibility mode because uh, they just don't fit the bill. They just they just won't work or play nice together, which that happens quite a bit. So um, we want them to play nice, and the aim is for everything to run smoothly. Now let's get back to the chapter here. We already talked about compatibility mode enough, so we're just going to focus on some other things here. Okay, now we're talking about the interface itself here. Remember, we were talking about that earlier in the beginning of the chapter. Um, well, what is the interface? Is what a lot of people are asking. What is the Windows interface? Well, let's define that. Well, the Windows interface is pretty much what they call the graphical user interface. Uh, something that you can uh, look at um, and get an understanding uh, pretty quick. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't understand a lot of code if you're a novice user. Um, in short, is basically just a set of utilities. As it, uh, as it mentions here, it says Windows offers a set of utilities or interfaces that every user should know about, or every tech should know about for that matter. So, thanks again for choosing Over the Wire.